the system is close to imploding. The printing presses and the Fed's manipulation will come to an end sooner than later. Our economy is based on debt. It is impossible to pay back the debt or our currency would be gone. That's the essence of the Ponzi scheme. On Friday, with some segments of the bond market starting to grow increasingly nervous about the outcome of the debt ceiling debate, whose drop-dead date is expected to fall sometime between late October and early November. This particular upcoming drama could proceed in the weeks and months ahead. The government spent a lot of time putting small businesses out of business during the health crisis. The only business that needs to be put out of business is government, and the sooner the better. And never let another government form again, since it's a threat to humanity. The federal government has aligned itself against the best interests of the American people and our constitutional republic. We, the people of the United States of America, should demand that the federal government is not funded during these federal budget negotiations. America's founding fathers would have burned every federal building to the ground by now. The central banks are now fully exposed. The US economy is not fragile, it's actually rotten. And the rot is centered in the White House and Fed. This is the most blatantly openly manipulated market in history. They don't care at all how criminal it all appears, since they are the most untouchable, unaccountable, and greedy thieving whores Wall Street has ever seen. One huge treasonous party of printing, of printing and theft. We cannot compare 2007 to today. Back then, we had much smaller trade deficits and still had a manufacturing capacity. Oh, and the Fed wasn't printing $120 billion a month to prop up the markets back then either. What a disgusting, bankrupt, debt-ridden country we have become. An oligarchy with limitless Fed bank money printing to help the rich get richer. Almost $30 trillion in debt and Congress wants to add more. They laugh about there is no possibility to ever pay it off. The fools tout having the world's reserve currency and printing to infinity as the solution. Inflation is soaring and tent cities are everywhere now. Our greed did us in. Millions are living beyond their means and buried in debt. Helicopter money and no need to work anymore. Welfare and warfare on a scale never before imagined. The huge housing bubble will burst soon and it will take everything with it. Stock markets will plunge as sellers head for the exits. The Fed will go to NERP and announce one more QE. But after a small pop, even more sellers will return. We are toast, crunchy and overcooked. Prepare accordingly, please. Hyperinflation is coming. If you don't have a reliable food source, you are already in trouble. What people experience is their own prosperity and that of their children and neighbors. The economy may be expanding, but if your wallet is as thin as it was last year, it doesn't feel like the economy is expanding. And if you earn $100,000 or less, your wallet is just as thin. If you borrow $100,000, the bank owns you. If you borrow $100 million, you own the bank. I don't like having so much national debt, but people often fail to realize just how much of a risk this is for China. They need us to pay them back. The US government debt currently stands at $29 trillion. 
if we divide this by the total population of America, then we get $86,293. This is the burden of national debt that each American has to bear. And it will keep on increasing because America has an ever-increasing debt. In order to understand the American debt problem, we need to look at the history of debt in America. Complexity doesn't make the national debt an irrelevant issue. And the scope of America's borrowing does matter a great deal. The US federal debt has climbed from $17 trillion to almost $29 trillion today. It is growing at a rate of over $1 trillion per year. Now that we have seen how the debt has come to this dangerously high level, let us look at the reason. So far, we have had only a cursory glance. It began with Reagan, who introduced the debate about tax cuts and debt. Reagan said, We presented a complete program of reduction in tax rates. Again, our purpose was to provide an incentive for the individual. Incentives for business to encourage production and hiring of the unemployed, and to free up money for investment. Now, the subsequent rulers of America reversed the tax cuts by increasing the tax rates. But this shows us one major reason why the debt levels in America keep rising. Whenever a government cuts taxes, let us take, for example, the Trump administration, which gave tax relief to big corporations and the super-rich in order to entice them to invest more. But we know this is an old script. What really happens is that tax revenue is one of the key sources of raising income for expenditure for any government. And when you give a big tax cut, you are basically reducing your tax revenue. When you reduce the tax revenue, you reduce the money available to spend on public expenditure. So when the Trump administration rolled out the tax cuts, it later realized that it needed to raise money to finance public sector spending. And so it went back to the same corporations and super elite to take a loan from them in the form of government treasury bonds, etc. Can you see the flaw in the system now? The corporations and the super rich who got a tax cut by the government ended up giving a loan to the US government. And now the US government owes them not only the loan, but also the interest on that loan. According to government estimates, the total cost of tax cuts alone is $1.6 trillion. This means the government needs to raise an equivalent amount of debt to finance public sector spending. So tax cuts are one major reason for the rising debt. Secondly, as mentioned before, the USA is a big country, and you need a lot of money to run it. And all of it is not going to come from tax revenue. And thirdly, the US has been constantly at war in the last few decades, and the wars have been funded through debt. Therefore, as a result of overspending tax cuts to aid the super-rich, the U.S. economy now stands at a huge debt of $29 trillion, which will continue to rise. The people of the U.S., who are the taxpayers, need to understand this before they go to vote the next time. Our national debt is already dangerously high, and so far, no government or candidate has given a workable solution for the debt problem. The filth in charge are beholden to the disgusting war machine, and they'll drive the country into the ground while lining their pockets, leaving everyone destitute. It doesn't matter if you give small businesses cash to pay employees when you took away their sales. If you were going to give aid to schools which closed their doors, I want my effing property tax money back! <sighs> Sorry. I pay property taxes to have my school district closed down, all parks and playgrounds closed, and access to all civic buildings shut off. The pothole on my street 
is now eight feet wide by 20 feet long. It has made its way through the last four repavings and is cutting through solid ground, essentially making its way back to 1955, when the street was first paved for the new development. I want my money back.